Uh, so here's where we were yesterday. We're in, in the Last Supper of Jesus with his disciples. So now he has huddled with his disciples. And in, from now until he's arrested, that is where he'll be. It's in a, in a very tight circle. And he has some things he needs to tell his disciples before he dies and before he's arrested. Uh, and so this whole, so we're in John 13. Uh, and, and the next um, four... Uh, maybe five um, chapters are going to be Jesus alone with his disciples, beginning with this. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that it was his hour, that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own, his disciples who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of, we talked about the Passover, that's the whole purpose of this uh, time, this this um, Last Supper, and then the time he's going to spend with them. Uh, and so we talked about how Jesus knew his hour had come. He knows who his betrayer is and what he's about to do. He knows his own identity, that he is the Christ. Uh, we talked about his humility, that it was unthinkable that a superior would wash the feet of someone under them. That would just never happen. I think that oh, has a lot to do with Peter's reaction that we're going to talk about more about in just a minute. Um, and then uh, now we're at his part. So we're going to look at a few uh, passages. Um, so after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table at Jesus' side. Who's that? Peter. John. <laughs> it's John. John never names himself. Do you remember that? Go way back to the beginning of the year. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. So, so they're reclining at table, and, and Jesus was next to uh, John. So Simon Peter motioned to him, to John, to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking, who was going to betray him. So the disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread that I have dipped in, what I have dipped in. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon the Scary. Uh, then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to, to Judas. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he, Judas, immediately went out, and it was night. That's that, right? So um, Jesus is broken and compassionate. For Judas. He doesn't say, get out of here. He doesn't say, you're a traitor. He doesn't say, how can you how can you even be thinking about doing this? He shows compassion. He could have exposed Judas. And if he had, I'm sure the other disciples would have risen up to kill him. No, you're not going to betray uh, our, our Lord. Uh, and so G G Jesus knew, I told you this yesterday, about Judas's traitorous ways before he even knew exactly who the traitor would be. And yet he has thought Judas's need, not his deed. Here's the thing. If Jesus can have compassion on the person who betrayed him, harmed us or who had hurt us in some way. Uh, Jesus told us to love our enemies. Now, I don't think I read that in here. It's basically, it means love everyone. Right? Love everyone. Jesus did. Jesus did. Here's what I've learned, and, and I, learned, I learned this as a mother. My favorite um, parenting book was called Shepherding a Child's Heart. Oddly enough, written by the brother of the guy that wrote this book. Um, and, and one of the things, one of the many things I learned from, from um, Paul Tripp, that's Ted Tripp. No, that's Paul. 
Tetra. The, one of the many things I learned from him is this. No behavior comes out uncaused. There's always a cause. No matter what your child is doing, no matter what your student is doing, no matter what your friend is doing, no matter what your husband is doing, there is a, no matter what you're doing, there is a cause for that behavior. And, to, and usually we ad address the behavior. Stop doing that. I'm going to punish you for doing that. You have a detention, right? But if we don't get to the root cause, we never understand why. And, and oftentimes, that root cause is some pain or some hurt in that person's and so behind every wrongful act, behind every sin, is a need in someone's life. I can't give you their names, but we had these two brothers at camp from the time they were seven to the time they were 11. And we loved these brothers, and they were full of the juices of life, as one of my friends uh, says. And, uh, and we told them about Jesus, and we told them about Jesus, and we told them about Jesus. Year after year. And then after they graduated from Royal Family, they um, they went on to the teen camp, and they were there at least for a few years, or at least for a couple of years. And they, they, because they were foster children, they had um, had severely, been, been severely treated as young children. And then the word came that they were both in prison. I wasn't angry. I, my heart broke for them. I wasn't angry. So my heart broke for them. Um, by the way, one of them is now coming to our church. See, all of that, and, and I'm not saying they're not responsible for what we, we are responsible for what we do our actions. I'm not saying they aren't responsible. I'm not saying they shouldn't have gone to prison. They should have gone, right? Uh, actually, it wasn't prison. It was in jail. But, um, but uh, there's a reason why they're, they were acting that way, because they themselves were broken and mistreated by others. We need to have compassion um, on others, because no action comes from a cause. There is always a cause there's usually someone lashes out. I don't know what it was in Judas' life. But I have a feeling that there was hurt. So Jesus didn't rebuke Judas uh, publicly. He, 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 he talked to him privately, but still, I would call it less than a rebuke. He had mercy on Judas treated him with kindness, um, and he even honored Judas by by giving him the you know dipping the bread and, and giving it to Judas because uh, in Judaism the, the the person who would uh, the the head of the table the head of the person at the table father or whatever would do that and then give it to the most important person. It's kind of like I don't know if you know this I know this because I was growing up. I that the person that was the, the most honored at the, at the party at the dinner table was to the right of the, of the host. Uh, and in fact, when we lived in Korea, my grandmother lived with us. And they, she came along to be a babysitter. I was in fourth grade. My older sister was in second grade. But my sister was in first grade. And Korea. So my grandmother came to live with us so that she could wasn't the babysitter. She was invited to all the parties, all the parties, all the parties, everywhere my mom went, my mom and dad went. And she was always put in the place of honor. Why? This is Korea. She was the oldest one. And they were very the elderly. And so this grandma, right, was, was the person that was honored. Jesus was honoring um, Judas uh, in, in, in doing that. Still, knowing exactly, um, exactly what he was going to do. I heard something years ago, and I'm telling you this 
uh, because it has been helpful to me. If there is someone in your life that is difficult to love, if there is someone in your life that you that, that you just do this with, right? I, I'm not going to name names. I don't know. Could be parents could be whoever it is, right? It, who, whoever it is. Here's, here's what someone told me that, that rocked my world. It is difficult to feel animosity towards someone. If you have trouble getting along with someone, you can get along with break away. Because it's difficult to feel animosity towards someone. So now we're going to talk about the disciples. When he had gone out, meaning Judas, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him. He's talking about himself. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me. And just as I said uh, to the Jews, I, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, do you lay down your life? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. I love picturing this, this um, scene. Jesus says, I'm going away. I'm going to a place you can't come. I'm going to leave you behind. And Peter is distraught. And I don't think, and then the next thing Jesus says is, a new commandment I give you. So, so now I'm leaving you, so y'all need to love each other. Y'all need to take care of each other, right? So a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And this is key for us. By this, all people will know you're, you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Look, we never argue people into God. And I, I, it, it, it hurts my heart that Christians are no more, known more for what they're against than what they're for. What if we loved people? What if we showed people the love of Jesus? Uh, but Peter doesn't hear any of this, right? He hears, I'm going away, you can't come. And I, I just imagine Peter in his head, no, oh, let's leave any of this, right? He's like, what do you mean he's leaving us? Why would he leave? What do you mean him? He can't leave us. We need him. And then he just blurts out, Lord, where are you going? Because I'm coming with you. And then he makes this rash statement of, I will die for you. Jesus is going to me. Um, and so this is a, a rash statement uh, from Peter, which happened fairly frequently, did it not? One of the reasons I love uh, mm -hmm. Peter. Uh, and so uh, Peter's rash statements, we start with, you will never wash my feet. Was that right? No, it wasn't. That, that wasn't right at all. You will never watch my feet. He's trying to tell God what to do. By the way, that doesn't work very well. You can try it if you want to, but it really doesn't work. Okay, so this is what you need to do for Jesus. No, that's, that's, that's backwards. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it's, and it's certainly, it, I mean, it isn't humility, but, but it is this sense of, of shock because this shouldn't be happening. It really shouldn't in their, in their, um, culture of uh, superior washing of feet of an inferior. Um, so um, nothing like that, had, literally nothing like that had ever happened before. Not just it never happened to Peter or the disciples, it had never happened before. So I think he's mostly shocked. I'm not going to be too hard on him. And then he said, when Jesus says, okay, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no part in me. Like you have no relationship with me. And so then he says, well, don't just wash, wash my feet, not only my feet, but wash all of me. So now he's like, you know, don't just don't just wash my, my feet. Give me a whole bath. Give me a complete bath. And, and that, that's characteristic of Peter, right? Kind of overreaching, kind of overstating uh, things uh, and, and letting his emotions 
uh, come away with him. And then in this last part that we just read, he says, I will lay down my life for you. I will die for you, Jesus. Uh, and he does eventually die for Jesus. But not until he's denied him three times. You know, we're not that much different. At least I'm not that much different from you. We often profess a greater faith than we actually live out. Um, so I'm not going to be too hard on you. Because I do. Um, and I think we all are. So then we see in verse 22 of chapter 13, the disciples' insecurity. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. So um, verse 22, uh, um, the disciples um looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. So the, deci the disciples um, were sorrowful, this is back at the table, that one of them were going to be a tra was going to be a traitor. Um, and uh, and they, they doubted their own strength to stand for Christ. Remember, they said, is, is it I will? Am I the one uh, that's going to betray you? Um, and they should have known. Like, I don't know. I don't have any to betray Jesus. I would never betray Jesus, right? But they didn't. They, they doubted them, their own uh, ability to live for Jesus. I'll tell you what, though. Sometimes we overestimate our, our ability to live for Jesus. And, and that's a problem, too, sometimes. Um, so they, they, but they were insecure about how, how, how closely they could uh, walk with Jesus. And we should... We should know um, our love for the Lord and, and, um, and our strength in Christ, which isn't perfect. We need to know that. We should know that we need to trust in our Lord. Um, and then uh, this next one, um, I'm, again, I'm going to be a little bit nicer than uh, the curriculum. Uh, the disciples' ignorance. So Jesus talked about the fact that he was going to be glorified soon, which of course means his uh, his glorification was not just his his resurrection, but his crucifixion as well. So he's talking about his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension, that he will be glorified in all of that. And he tells his disciples to live by this rule of love. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you are to love one another, um, and uh, they were they they were uh, more concerned with what Jesus said about going away than they were with loving one another. And then Jesus, or excuse me, P Peter asks this question: Why can I not follow? Um, and and um, he, he was totally ignorant of what was about to happen, but how could he not be? Nobody saw this. Until he was actually on the cross. Um, and so, of course, he was ignorant. So I'm not, I'm not going to dap dog on Peter for that, um, or the other disciples. Because they had no framework from which to understand a dying Messiah. They, now, was that predicted? Was that prophesied in the Old Testament? Yes, but literally everyone, not just the disciples. Yes, they were the closest to Jesus, but they were also expecting him to overthrow Rome. But he didn't come the first time to be a political Messiah. Now, he will restore the kingdom of Israel, but he didn't have any plans to do that right away. But they, they were wondering, why would he leave them? And why could they not go with him? It was very troubling, obviously. They didn't understand. But truthfully, they couldn't understand. At least not yet. Eventually, they get it. Um, and again, this is a little harsh. The, the disciples' complete failure. But 
what is true, that in a very short period of time, all of these disciples proclaimed that they loved Jesus, except for one. They deserved it. One would betray him. One would deny him. And nine would run away. Um, they weren't they weren't really I'll go anywhere I'll do it so the question that I ask myself and the question that I ask you Am I willing to follow Jesus no matter the cost? Sometimes I think we're all to do. I'll do anything. Oh, that's what you want me to do. Uh, but we are going to follow Christ. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to give you the uh, quiz. I'm going to give you the rest of the hour to work on this if you finish it before uh, the end of the, uh, the class period. You may turn it in. If you finish it, uh, then you uh, can turn it in as well. <coughs> uh, so we're going to get the Thank you.